As we're watching the case counts here, as well as the overall hotspots developing around the country, you may have noticed a shift away from what we saw play out when it first happened here in the U.S., when New York City was very much closely watched. We're now seeing it play out in more rural centers and smaller cities across the U.S. And for a focus on that and what Congress should be weighing when we think about uh, addressing the concerns playing out across rural America, I want to bring on Center for American Progress senior economist uh, Ben Gajalori, who joins us now. Uh, and Mr. Ajalori, when we talk about this, it's it's interesting because so much of what we saw play out is now playing out at a different scale. When we think about rural communities in the U.S. not necessarily having the same access to health care than what you might expect in a city. And that's kind of addressing uh, one of the main underlying issues that we've seen since this all began, which would be testing. So what do you think uh, needs to be done here when we're thinking about how this might affect rural communities different than what we've seen play out in the cities? So thank you for having me. The biggest thing we need to do is to figure out how to get testing through all the uh, different types of communities because they have the lack of healthcare infrastructure. And so we've seen some money that's come through the CARES Act and through some of the other policies, but we need a lot more and a lot more of developing the infrastructure and the test and tracing schemes that's going to be helpful. And when we talk about that specifically, I mean, we've talked about the wait time on testing and, and how even just waiting for the results might impact uh, decisions in terms of how people quarantine and, and whether or not they know they're even a risk if they're asymptomatic. But on that front, uh, why is it so much more of an issue uh, in rural areas for that concern versus what we've seen play out in the cities? So the biggest thing is if you think about the healthcare infrastructure, looking at hospitals, so that if there's an outbreak that happens, then what's going to happen is going to spread quickly. But then the question is, do they have the capacity to be able to take care of it? And so we've looked at, you know, hospital closures have been a big issue over the last 10 to 15 years. 90% of hospital closures have happened in rural communities. So if they do have an outbreak, they're less able to tackle it. Yeah, and when it comes to the economic impacts here too, because we just heard that kind of outlaid here uh, from Jessica Smith just a second ago, but when we talk about that next round of stimulus, it does seem like another $1,200 uh, for qualifying Americans in the form of a stimulus check will be coming through. Uh, pushback on that front from people who might say, uh, you know, that goes a lot farther in these rural areas, they might say, why do we need to do more there? But when you think about the economic impacts of some of these rural areas, smaller towns that might have been left hanging uh, without some additional money coming through in the CARES Act, as a lot of that was allocated towards larger metropolitan areas, uh, why would they need more economic support beyond uh, some of the things that we're talking about here? So when we talk about rural communities, we have to think about this not in terms of what's happening during this pandemic, but what's happened in the past. So in the Great Recession, it hit you know all communities throughout the country. But then when we looked at the recovery from the Great Recession, rural communities did not recover to the same extent as other places. So then this is kind of a double whammy. And so that they, they need a lot of help in that case. And so what we saw in you know looking at some of the data that I've shown in my report is that that $1,200 check, along with the expanded unemployment insurance, really helped households maintain their spending, which then trickled into small businesses and helping them out. And the other aspect, too, that you guys highlight in your report, uh, also, uh, I guess, comments on the health and underlying concerns there when we talk about rural communities. Obviously, for a lot of years, uh, diabetes has been a problem in a lot of these communities, particularly in the South, when we think about underlying issues that might make these populations a little bit more susceptible to the coronavirus. So how big of an element is that as we see this kind of transition from the Northeast uh, back when this first hit in March and April to now the Sun Belt and some other uh, rural places in uh, these regions? And so you hit a very big point where a lot of uh, underlying issues in the South, also if you look at tribal communities, the lack of base and public infrastructure. And so we think about a lot of things in terms of structural racism, in terms of housing, in terms of the environment, have led to a lot of these uh, underlying issues. And so once the pandemic hits, it's going to hit them harder and they need more resources to be able to combat that and combat some of those issues. Yeah, and we'll see what plays out here. As we were just discussing, Republicans and Democrats seem to be very far apart. All these elements that you're raising here uh, surely going to be stressed there as these talks continue, uh, but appreciate the update on that front. Ben Gajalori, the Center for American Progress uh, Senior Economist, appreciate that.